In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yermet, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back. Sunday, the 26th of March, 2023, fifth Sunday of Lent. Oh my word, we are close to the mysteries of our salvation. Come next Sunday, we are on Palm Sunday. And because we are this close, we are reminded of the fact that the coming of Christ into this world was to take us out of death into life. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Cynthia Tavaya from Gweru, Zimbabwe, who celebrated her birthday yesterday, takes for us the first reading. Martha Estavi Mensa from Accra, Ghana, who celebrates her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. Sipiwe Mwanga from Kitwe, Zambia, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Chesko Msaga, a precious blood missionary working in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, as he celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 12 to 14. Thus says the Lord God. Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you home into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, says the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 130, verse 1 to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 7a, 7b to 8. Response is taken from Psalm 130, verse 7b. And the response is, With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy. In him is plenty for redemption. If 
If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plenty for redemption. I long for you, O Lord. My soul longs for his word. My soul hopes in the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let Israel hope for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy. In him is plenty for redemption. For with the Lord there is mercy. In him is plentiful redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy. In him is plenty for redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Romans chapter 8, verse 8 to 11. Brethren, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God really dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation is taken from Joel chapter 2, verse 12 to 13. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me shall never die. Glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 11, verses 1 to 45. At that time, a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go into Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there no twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Thus he spoke, and then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awake him out of sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, 
If he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary sat in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying quietly, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary, when she came where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And they said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with the first reading of today by digging out the background of this first reading. It is from Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel was a priest in Jerusalem and in 597 BC he was taken together with King Joachim into Babylon among the first deportees. And while there, he discovered his call as not just a priest, but as a prophet as well. You know, priests are also prophets. Who is a prophet? A prophet is somebody who tells people the truth. A prophet is somebody who calls a spade a spade. A prophet is not somebody who tells you that Liverpool will win 7-0 with uh, Manchester United or Man City. That is not a prophet. Those are foretellers. But a real prophet is one who points out mistakes, one who is supposed to guide the people in the true path of life. When the people of the southern kingdom went with Ezekiel in exile, those first deportees, they started feeling like God had abandoned them, he had left them, and many were as good as dead. In fact, in those early years of the prophetic ministry of Ezekiel, we see Ezekiel very tough and rough on the people and warning those who had remained in Jerusalem that if they don't do things well, they would also find themselves in exile. It didn't take long. Ten years later, there was a bigger deportation in 587 BC, and many of the productive young people were taken into exile. Jerusalem remained like a widow, and people now started feeling like they had been abandoned. God was not with them. And you know what it means not to be with God? It means that you have no life because God is life. And when you have no God in your life, you have no life at all. You see many of our young people living their lives without God. They have no life. They are dead. And this was the feeling among the people of Israel. They felt dead. They felt like they were not at all living. And Ezekiel later on in his prophetic ministry toned down. He started now becoming an encouragement just like second Isaiah. The Isaiah of his own time starting from chapter 40 of the book of Isaiah. There was something sweet about Ezekiel. In chapter 37, he sees himself in a valley of dry bones. And the dry bones were Israel. The dry bones were these people who had given up hope. The dry bones were just like any one of us. In our lives, when we see nothing is changing, when we see this confusion in our marriage is not at all improving, when we see the joblessness around us, when we see our economies crashing, we become hopeless. We become dry bones. And Ezekiel was told to prophesy to those dry bones. But he was asked before prophesying, Son of man, do you think this dead situation can have life? I don't know what I would have answered if I were to be asked about what is happening in our world today, where I see morality losing its course, where I see what were not rights at all becoming rights, where I see something completely dead, our conscience, and God is asking me, do you think this conscience of humanity can come back to life? Do you think this death of corruption can come back to authenticity and innocence? I will tell God, you know, and I know the power you have through your word to transform a dead situation into something living. 
You tell us in today's word through Ezekiel that says the Lord, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O oh my people. This raising from the graves is not about resurrection from the dead. It is a resurrection from a dead life that we are living. God knows we are in the graves right now. God knows nothing much is changing in our lives right now. God knows some of us have been in Lent from the very beginning on the 22nd of February when we began Lent and we still have those habits. The Lord is saying he's going to take us out of our addictions. The Lord is saying he will open the grave of gossip and he will transform us into free human beings who are able to talk without looking back to see who is hearing them or not because they are free. Because only free people are alive. If you are not free, then you are not alive. If you are to calculate what to say, then you are not alive. You are dead and the Lord is about to open your grave. I will open your graves and raise you from your graves. Oh, my people, imagine even when God knows we are dead, we are his people. That's our God. That we are still his people. Even when he pities us in our deadness, deadness in our death. Even in those moments that he feels bad, that we have allowed ourselves to live a dead life. He still calls us his people. We are his people. He still calls us my people. God will never ever give up on us. We might have given up on God, but he has not given up on us. He still sees a project in us and he knows transformation can occur in our lives. He just wants us to be receptive to him. He just wants us to recognize our grave. What is it that is keeping you down? What is it that is making you not to move forward in your life? What has made you get stuck in your life? He's going to open that and raise you from that. But you must be ready. You must be available. And this sounds like a prophecy being fulfilled in the gospel that we have today. The last sign of the gospel of John. That is the sign of bringing Lazarus back to life. I have often told you that in the gospel of John, there are no miracles. There are signs. But those signs are actually miracles in the language of the other evangelists. And after this sign in chapter 11, Jesus is ready to face his death. Because he will have fulfilled what he came for. He came for one reason. To take us out of our graves. That we may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10. 10. That is his manifesto. And he makes it clear through this practical experience. His friend Razras is sick. And they tell him about it. He delays to go back to Bethany for one reason. He wants Lazarus, his beloved friend, to experience what every human being experiences. Death, physical death. To say, listen, you are following Christ. You are living in the path of God. But this does not exclude you from suffering. You are going to become sick just like any other human being. You are going to be admitted to hospital if you are lucky just like any other human being. You may die in a road accident just like any other human being. 
But that does not mean that God has abandoned you. That does not mean that God is not there. He wants to tell us clearly, I came here not to prevent physical death. No, I came here to give you life spiritually. I came here to prevent something worse than physical death. Your spiritual death is worse than physical death. Being in the intensive care unit in your spiritual life, where you are living in doubt, where you don't see anything making sense in this world, where your sortiness has actually faded, you are worse than somebody who has even died physically. This you must understand. I'm not talking about something small here. I'm talking about something very big. Jesus did not come to prevent physical death, but he came to prevent spiritual death because spiritual death means you are forever doomed. But physical death is just for a while. There is life after that. There is life, in fact, very lengthy. I want to make lengthy, lengthy, so that you understand what I'm talking about. It's eternity. And he wants to say, let nothing hinder you from this. When he came to his friend Lazarus, he was four days late. He had to make sure that coming to see Lazarus was indeed coming to see somebody completely dead. Because if it was just a day, if it was just a few hours after that, many medical doctors would have said, no, maybe clinically dead, but this person could have just been in a coma. So no miracles performed here. No, you know what God does? He makes sure that when he comes to your aid, There is no other way any human being can help you. You are Lazarus. God helps. The meaning of that name. God helps. God is my help, not a human being. And Lazarus indeed had to die for his name to make sense. Sometimes God puts us in a dead situation so that we may understand that we are Lazarus, that we are people who rely on God as the only one who helps. It had to be four days, not three days, not two days, but three plus one. So it is a completely dead situation. And I don't know if you are facing something similar to that where you are in a completely dead situation. You are looking at your age, you are over 40, and you are seeing yourself not yet in marriage. It is three plus one, four days, I should say. You are in a Lazarus situation. Go back to your God, cling to him, and you are going to see him coming. He may be four days late, but something big is going to happen still in your life. I don't know, you have stayed for too long without a job and you think you have exhausted all the options. If you are thinking like that, you are in Lazarus situation. God is going to come through, just depend on him, cling to him and understand that he is the one who helps you. And this had to be made clear to Martha and Mary. The family that was very familiar to Jesus. A family that had no father, no mother. A family of brothers and sisters representing the Christian family. Representing the family of believers. In the family of believers, we only have brothers and sisters. In the family of believers, when we lose a brother... When we lose a sister, it is on us. And we run to God and say, if you had been here. This family of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, 
is the family we have on daily bread is the family we have in our Christian communities where what affects my brother, what affects my sister affects me. And I have to cry on behalf of that person. And this explains to us why we also cry on behalf of those who cannot cry on their own behalf. It explains why we pray for the dead. Lazarus was dead and Martha and Mary prayed for Lazarus, expecting something to be done about this life. I know he will be raised on the last day. No, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will never die. And even though he dies, he shall live. Do you believe this? Oh, yes. Mary believes that. And that is why she is able to have that conversation with Jesus. And those of us who pray for the dead, we are like Mary, we are like Martha, because we have this conviction that God in Jesus has power over the dead and can bring them back to life. That's the conviction we have. And then something happens. They go to the grave and... Jesus seeing all those people around and those who were crying, he was moved and he wept. He wept not just because of the love that he had for Lazarus, but because of these people who had no faith, lead to faith indeed. He was weeping for these people because when you have no faith, you are dead. When your faith is small, you are dead. And he was weeping for these people because they were as good as dead. I don't know how many times he has wept due to our lack of faith in our lives. I don't know how many times he keeps getting concerned about our faithlessness. We have to get back to life and on Easter Vigil, we are going to renew The reminder of that which brought us back to life. Baptism, as the second reading tells us today, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That the coming back to life of Jesus is the coming back to life of each one of us. And baptism reminds us of this because in baptism we die through that water to ourselves and come back to a new life. And may this new life be visible so that as we get closer to the Paschal Mysteries, we may say, yes, we came out of the grave in this condition. Now I'm no longer this. Yes, I was in the grave of gossip. I was in the grave of unforgiveness. I was in the grave of addictions. Now I am out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Sunday to you. Thanks be to God. Oh, no.